Simo, you have the screen. Yeah, just a second. I'll try to find the correct page. <laughs> uh, so, so yes. Yeah, so, so in this section, uh, I'll quickly go, to, go through a quick example of how to install stuff. Uh, how stuff is usually installed uh, in a cluster environment, and specifically, I'll talk about Conda environments because uh, nowadays Python is by far the most popular language for scientific computing. So, uh, like, no, no. Uh, how can I say it? Uh, no favorites uh, chosen, but but it just happens to be because everybody's using it and it's just very, very simple language to use. So uh, Conda environments are these kinds of environments that are used to uh, install install uh, Python uh, with specific versions of specific packages that you need because Python has a rich ecosystem of packages. So you usually need for your code, you need some uh, Python packages, usually specific packages, to get your stuff rolling. And uh, Conda is nowadays also very influential to many other uh, frameworks. Many other languages provide similar kinds of tools. So R, for example, has its Rnv, uh, one example. Uh, Julia has its Julia packages. And many other languages have a similar kind of a structure, similar kinds of tools to handle the same problems that Conda tries to solve. Uh, so, but but without further ado, let's let's check uh, what what how we can install some Conda packages. So, this is a bit of a spoiler uh, uh, that we uh, uh, will be uh, I will be showing some things that we you will see later on, so, such as connecting to the cluster. Uh, but but uh, you will be able to do this later on. So how do how does uh, stuff usually work with with Conda? Uh, is that you you basically you need the installer. So Conda, like many other languages, has this as well. But Conda is this package manager. So basically, you you can do the, use it to install various packages, uh, and it can handle all of these packages uh, uh, yourself. So so in in the cluster, uh, you first need to like tell Conda what 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 kind of environment it's working on and this can change from site to site but usually if you're working with conda you need to uh, load it in some sort of a module uh, we'll talk about this later but you'll need to like get access to the conda and then you will have to tell it to install stuff to the right place so you need to run these commands uh, you know to get it working uh, this is a good example also of, of how to read documentation in in our web page or in many other places so in many places you will see these kinds of like like commands that you need to run first time you set something up and then uh, you don't have to worry about them too much uh, so so if you have a problem with a specific software you usually need to go to the documentation of the cluster search for the application in in question and see if there's instructions provided some, uh, of course, if the instructions are old or some, some don't look good or they don't work, you need to contact us. But basically, well, I have already run these, uh, so I don't run them in, in a command. But usually, you have something like this when you first start using a program. So you need to, like, uh, if you're going to use some program in a, in a specific environment, you need to... Uh, usually do some like cleaning up, make make certain that the program works in the system. But how, why is Conda popular? Well, the reason is that usually if you create envi these environments in um, in Conda, uh, you you can specify all of the dependencies in there. So many of you are probably going to be working with Python, and I highly recommend you start working with these environments already because that will save you lots of TS in the future. Because usually in in this kind of computing environments, it's very hard to get like a consistent like everybody to work together, like all of the software that you want to work together. And Conda is designed to like make it as easy as possible to install like very, very many different packages at the same time and make certain that everything works together. Like uh, it's it's like everybody, um, like if you think about 
your laptop. Your laptop might be a Windows machine. Your laptop might be a Linux machine or a Mac machine. It, it has different rules than uh, an HPC cluster, which is a Linux machine and probably some operating system you haven't ever heard of. So what you need to do is like you need to bring your own like uh, own pasta with you or, or your own <laughs> own kinds of tools with you, your own kinds of stuff with you. And Conda manages to do it. Like Conda brings your like if you don't know what kind of food you're being offered uh, when you when you uh, go to go to a friend's house, you might bring your own like food that you like. Uh, so so this is the case. So so in Conda, you typically create an environment. So here's an like a quick example. So I have this environment here. I copy this name, this, and I create an environment uh, file for it. It's these are called like this environment YAMLs. In this case, I have already uh, already created this. There's a spoiler there. I will remove that line. But basically, here I have an environment where I need to create an environment. Uh, with certain packages. Uh, and with Conda, you can simply, uh, if you first do the initial steps that you load the module, you can simply create this environment using these commands. So Conda and create file. I might have already have this created, so I will need to remove it. Yeah. But once we install this, you will see what is the why why uh, why this these kinds of tools are important. So in let's think at what what we were talking with Enrico previously that you were working at your laptop, you might be working at the HPC cluster, you might be working in different places. You want the same tools to be available everywhere, and and you want the installation procedure to be documented so that you can. Uh, you can replicate the same environment. You want you don't want to like every time you go to a different uh, kitchen to have like different uh, try to find where are the utensils that you need. You don't want to like like you don't want to uh, always try to figure out how do you get your code to run. So with Conda and similar tools, you can simply create an environment in different places that are like the same, like you can get the same environment in different places. If you don't use uh, these kinds of tools, or if you cannot use these kinds of tools, uh, you still would benefit in having some sort of like a description of what you, how do you install whatever you're doing? Because then you can replicate these instructions. Even if the instructions are just like a text file for yourself, you can um, you can replicate it. And of course, in this case, the Conda automatically does the thing. So you can see here that it it uh, it solved this environment. So it solved which packages it needs to install, and then it does the installation for you. So this is Conda is mainly used for Python and R uh, nowadays, but it can also install Julia, I think, as well. Uh, but uh, similar tools are are available for other other things. So now that you you have the environment comp instead of using what it says here you set do what it says in the documentation so you should use the source activate uh, conda example uh, and if you just follow these orders you get like a environment and now you can see that I'm this in this kind of an environment where <laughs> where I have the packages installed. Uh, in the in the environment now, if I list whatever packages I have, you notice that there's a huge bunch of packages, huge bunch of software that was built, uh, but was provided by the Conda. Uh, and this is like a small, small example, uh, small example environment. But in in general, when you are working uh, with scientific code, you usually need to uh, like you need to specify uh, quite rigidly the inst installation instructions. What you need to do, you need to specify the requirements. Uh, 
and and these requirements are usually defined from the top down so instead of like installing lots of like if you have your own laptop you might run some installation commands and you try to build it from the bottom up instead you should look at what is the program that you want to use and what does it require and then work backwards from there so in this case for example if i wanted to use numpy and pandas uh, these popular python packages i set these as dependencies and conda will handle like it will draw all of these other packages automatically and it will create me this environment that 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 uh, that supports these packages that i actually require and this is common thing in scientific uh, software installation that you need to look at this documentation of of the site uh what what the site provides so in this case what uh, our documentation says or what what your university's documentation says uh you should look at uh, the documentation of the actual packages or the actual software that you want to use and then work backwards from there and, and install it or uh, find out whatever those needs. Of course, some programs such as Conda, they handle this for you so you don't have to like worry about it. Uh, you will automatically get the, the requ uh, prerequisites of, of those packages. Uh, there is over here in the documentation there is description of how do you read these environment files so so they are pretty self-evident uh, once you look at the documentation so there's where do you get the packages what packages you need to install you can specify uh, specify versions and stuff like that you can install stuff from pip as well uh, so if you need need like packages that are not yet provided by conda um, there are various tools and if especially if you're going to be working in machine learning world so this is part of the reason why we why uh, we decided to give this uh, talk um, here even though it might not affect everybody uh, if you're going to be working with deep learning or machine learning you will use gpus and in those cases uh, the GPU codes require other libraries and they re require gigabytes worth of libraries to work. And to get that stuff working, you need to use uh, these more complex Conda environments to get it everything working together. And uh, for that, I highly recommend checking uh, some of these examples. Like if you need, know that you're going to be using TensorFlow or PyTorch or whatever, uh, there's example environments here that you can use to to do the installation. So, in uh, in general, I would suggest that uh, if you are going to be working it with science, well, any scientific code, uh, it, this it, this is related to Conda, this example. But if you're going to be working with any scientific code, it's a good idea to check the documentation. Ask us and then work from the top down instead of from the bottom up. If you Google like how to install, let's say TensorFlow, you will get blog posts from 2013 that describe the thing, how to do it. And uh, they will lead you to, into this route of, okay, I need to like, I, I need to get this stuff working in order to get my stuff, like the end product what, that I want uh, to work. But that is not how it necessarily needs to be nowadays. So, so it's a good idea to start from the top, like start, what, what do you actually want? What, what, what software do you want to work? What, what, what software do you want to use? And then look at that and what that requires. So ask the software or the documentation, what, what does it need? And then work from there downwards. If there's any complications, if you have any problems, then that's why we are here to, to either write the documentation or to help with that. And there are plenty of tools such as Conda that can do it automatically so that uh, we don't we don't need to uh, like we don't need to uh, handcraft every installation out like by ourselves. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know if I have uh, more to say whether any questions. Now I'm yeah, sharing so, HackMD. Yeah. We can take a look. Yeah. 
yeah so so this was a quick demo so it was mainly uh like uh yeah this was not a type along because there were basically spoilers ahead like something that we haven't yet like we haven't yet connected to the cluster we will do that after after this talk uh, but in the future you will encounter this situation where you want to install stuff and then it's good idea to first check where do have do we have instructions to how to install this stuff uh, if we have instructions, then we'll use that. Uh, if those instructions don't work, then let us know because then we, we don't want to publish uh, false news. Um, and uh, if if uh, yeah yeah so 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 it's but it's important to know that there's information around. Like you don't want to be in a situation where you think that okay, like I need to figure it out myself because that's not how scientific computing works like it's a shared system everybody shares the problems everybody has the similar kinds of problems there's like you're not alone in this uh, uh you're not the only one doing what you're doing so so it's important to know that okay everybody else is fighting the same fight and uh somebody might be using different tools somebody might, might use another tool but it's important to like learn uh, from the whole field like okay there's uh there are things like this available and then utilize them in your work. Mm. Do you expect anyone to be an expert on these topics after this course? No. Okay. No. So no. like, yeah. like, like for me, like I, I personally learn, uh, like I, I forget everything almost immediately, and then I relearn it and relearn it uh, time and time again. But the important thing is not to stop learning. Like, like the important thing is that okay, you have a have a problem, uh, and and you figure out how to solve yeah. it. You forget how to like you you often you end up in a situation where you install a software, you finally manage to get it working. Yeah. You forget how to do it then you have to do it again like mm -hmm. half a year later mm -hmm. that happens all the time and that can be solved in the best way by documenting uh, what you're doing yeah. but if you're not documenting it it's important to like relearn and keep keep learning and and if and in many cases asking other people like hey do you do you know how to do this because mm -hmm. like that is the best way of of uh like getting the information, like mm -hmm. getting information that is yeah. the best way of um, doing yeah. Uh, stuff. Yeah, so I think I, I'm seeing a lot of questions here. A lot of these will be answered in future days, or it's more logical to answer them there. This was just mm. sort of like a preview to get you interested in the next days, I think. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it was like, like this was just like I I just went through a a small subset of the documentation of a single program in in the cluster and and if you think about like okay this is yeah. only one program this is one of the most popular so that's why we I gave it as an example but uh, there are hundreds of programs that people are running mm -hmm. in the cluster hundreds of different programs and all of them have their own complications and all of them have their own things like and it, it's not only in the hbc world it's if you try to install it in your own workstation it might get mm -hmm. complicated mm -hmm. so all of these occur everything like this happens in scientific computing because yeah. all of the software is interlinked and everything works together so it's important to realize that okay you're not in this alone you're not like like it, like the vast majority of problems are solved by somebody else like it's not solved by you. You find the solution in, in Stack Overflow. You find the solution mm -hmm. in some somebody else has written a program that fixes your problems. Yeah, and it's important to to get to this mindset that okay, before I try to do it for weeks and on end to mm -hmm. figure it out myself, uh, you um, yeah, you try I, to find a solution outside. I was just <laughs> like in. in yeah, I was just talking to one of my friends this weekend, and <clears> she <throat> said, I asked her the standard question, okay, I'm doing this course, what do you know now that you wish someone had taught you when you first started? And she had a really good 
point, like ask for help when it's needed. And it might be hard to know, but like her, she had developed the strategy, okay, like I'll work on this problem for one hour and then I'll go to garage and not waste much more time. And I thought that was a really good way to look at it somehow. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so, so like as, as scientists or people who work in scientific fields, everybody's curious usually how to how to do stuff and if you don't figure how stuff works you become you can become irritated that okay like it shouldn't be that hard i should be smarter than this i should be able to understand this mm -hmm. like that that's a natural at least for me that's a natural reflex mm -hmm. uh, but but there's always like this cost benefit analysis of is it something you really need to like, is this something I really need to use my time on, or would it be better used in somewhere else? Mm. Like, actually doing something I like instead of like doing something I hate. Mm. <laughs> like, trying to trying to figure out how to install some stuff mm. that I don't I don't like the whole workflow. I don't like to do stuff. Mm. So in those cases, it's better to ask other people to find information in our documentation in other places that try to maybe describe what is the prob problem and try to solve it so that you don't yeah. you can focus on the stuff that you like uh so because like even though we don't want to talk about it that much we're still part of it basically like that like or oh, there is it kind of mm -hmm. problems and that is the most frustrating kind of problems when when you have like you cannot get some, something installed and in those cases it's usually better to just like find solutions that work for other people, mm -hmm. maybe in the documentation, maybe somewhere else, mm -hmm. uh, and then use those instead of like trying, <laughs> trying to like just um, uh, get through by brute force mm -hmm. and and force of will. Okay. Uh, okay. Our time's almost up. I guess we can go to the break. So what we have next? So there'll be a one-hour demo on Secure Shell. This is a special topic, and special means it varies each year. So if it's too boring for you, it's not strictly necessary to be there. And then one hour from now, at 15 Helsinki time, we have the connecting to an HPC cluster part. And this uses SSH and gets us ready for the next day, for days two and three. So, yeah, so what's the point here? So in the next hour, we have a sort of general overview demo. Here's some things that you might not have known. And then we go to the um, the important part for the next day. So let's go to a break. And you can decide which of the next sessions you attend. Um, Yeah, great. So see you soon. Bye.